Welcome to Blocks and Talks, the podcast that brings you everything you need to know about LEGO. From covering past, present, and future LEGO sets, to interviews with notable community members, our show covers it all. Here we are, part four, and finally the red coats have arrived. Once again, I'm joined by James as we cover the year 1992 for the LEGO Pirates theme. How's it going, James? I'm doing fantastic today. How are you doing? Great, especially now that there's news of an upcoming LEGO El Dorado Fortress this year. I, I think it just lines up perfectly with everything we're talking about. I cannot wait to buy multiple of this set. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. The brick links for like all the unique parts and figures, it's great. And like I think this is going to be a wonderful revival for pirate fans. Can't wait. And even though we're going into the red coats, I am so excited that they're doing blue coats again and not remaking the red coats. Yeah, or maybe they'll give us like the off. Oh, imagine if they give you like two versions and you can buy either, something like that. That would be really cool. Or even just a red coat as a prisoner. That would be a really nice inclusion. Mm-hmm. All right, so without further ado, let's get started all the way back in 92. So first off is 1464 Pirate Lookout. Pretty standard, 17 pieces, one fig. Um, actually, interestingly enough, there's two variations. There's a poly bag and a box version of this. Only difference is just like the box art and stuff. But yeah, they're both fundamentally the same exact set. Interestingly enough, though, the, the used value for the two is about the same. It's like on average, $13, $14. But the new val value is very different. So for the poly bag version, it's around $40. And for the box version, it's around like 85 So you're basically paying $40 more for a cardboard box. Take that for what you will. And yeah, James, you want, just want to break down what we're looking at here? Yeah, I mean, this is another thing we haven't seen before. This one, Pirates can maybe start getting a little repetitive, but I think it still has that charm. We see, once again, two what looks like four by six yellow base plates representing sand. We get a small stone structure, which can either represent a ruined fort, a ruined tower, Use your imagination entirely. You get a pirate flag, a barrel, and some foliage. And of course, if you do get the first mate, Rummy, is his name, or Quartermaster Riggings, if you go by the Barracuda Bay instruction description. Yeah, once again, just a simple supplemental set that they have every year up till now. And on the other side of it, we got 1492 Battle Cove. 26 pieces, one figure again. Came in a poly bag. Uh, it'll set you around $20 used and $50 new. This set is interesting to me because it uses the same character. However, it switches around the leg color and the hat color. They do this quite often, so you kind of have to use your imagination if it's representing a different character altogether or if it's the same character just switching his outfits and not acting like a cartoon character. What's nice, though, about this set is you get that beautiful printed wall panel Another flag, you get a bigger palm tree element, which is always great to add to your existing palm trees. You get a cannon. Once again, if you live in the United States, it was a non-firing cannon. But if you live in the rest of the world, you actually did get a firing variety. And you do get a classic shark, which is always a great inclusion. Yeah, it feels like both of these sets, Pirate Lookout and uh, Battle Cove, are, are very supplemental. And honestly, I, feel, I can see you like amassing a bunch of these just for the parts. Just like get more pirates, get more like sand pieces, more foliage, more cannons, more whatnot, you know? I could see this happening back in the day. Um, I wish you could do this nowadays. Obviously, it gets a little bit more expensive. You would actually have better luck just buying parts. I will say, though, combining these two sets would look pretty nice, I think, because the two stone structures look like they can kind of go together. And then that way, you kind of have a good hideout, if you will. Yeah. And you can actually build on this further with the next set up here. We got 1889 Pirate's Treasure Hold, 34 pieces, one figure. And re interestingly enough, I'm not seeing a new value on this. Maybe there hasn't been one in a while, but uses $20. It does say the availability was limited. So I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it must have been a limited release, which is always something special. However, no fear. This is a very easy set just to part together. You don't have to worry about trying to buy it used or whatnot. It has the exact same minifigure we saw in the last time. 
And this time you get a treasure chest, which I would assume you get four foam gold coins, which is always a great inclusion. You get a palm tree element, which is actually quite expensive nowadays. And you get the classic monkey, which is always a beautiful thing to own. Yeah, very simple. Just looks like a sandy beach plate again. Just a little stone box to hold the treasure chest. Pirate with his little tricorn at palm tree. Simple enough. And here we are. Next set is where we see what we've been talking about and hyping up for a while. 6247 Bounty Boat. Bounty Boat, sorry. 36 pieces, three figures, retailed for around 475, which would put you around a 13 cent price per piece. Uh, used, it's around $20, new 80. And this is the first time we see the British Redcoats. Want to have the honors? I would love to. What we see here is the first type of battle pack. We kind of got a hint of these back in 1989 as well. However, this is just a good way to build up troops. You get an officer type figure or a captain, whatever you want him to be. And you get a basic red coat soldier, which is always a great inclusion. Both figures are fully decked out. You're not getting bare bones versions. And of course, you also get a pirate quote unquote. You can kind of use your imagination. In the box art, it makes him look like he's a pirate being held hostage almost, trying to oar the boat, like row the boat. However, you could also see it as just an extra crew member for the upcoming Imperial flagship we would take a look at later. I do love the story here, though. You get a red rowboat with the British red coat flag, which is always a great thing because it's actually quite expensive and the cliffs break very easily. Um, you have four chrome gold coins in the treasure chest and you get a pickaxe and a shovel, which is suggesting that they're treasure hunting, which is kind of the opposite that we always think of. You usually think of pirates going after buried treasure, but here we're clearly seeing some Imperials do it. Yeah, and I think what distinguishes these unique figures is like, at least for the Red Colt soldier, he's got plain white legs to represent like the lower half is uniform, top half, as you expect, red arms, red background. He's got like the, the iconic British like white X of the two belts crossing with like the white undershirt. He's got like blue pauldrons, always welcome. A uh, brown backpack and a black shako with a musket and saber. Same with like the officer, similar, but he has golden color pauldrons and a tricorn hat. And I think what makes these things so charming is that there's just so much detail to them. Like they, they're not really bare bones, like you said. Like they have everything to make a complete soldier. He's got the full uniform, the equipment, the looks, the tools. Like this truly is like a modern battle pack kind of. I also like that these figures really were ahead of their time. Like you said, the detail was fantastic. If you look closely at the minifigures, you can actually see they have metallic gold printing on their torso, which is pretty rare for the time period. Like metallic gold wasn't even a color and like it was inventory for part usage at this time. They only had chrome gold. So to see metallic gold used in the printing is quite fantastic. I also love just how simple the change is. You know, we're making this huge thing saying it's French versus British and you can see the flag difference. But in reality, it's just color swap. It's the exact same soldier print that we saw before. Even the officer or captain uses the exact same colored epaulets. However, everything is just color swapped. Instead of a blue torso, we're getting a red one. Instead of red epaulets, we're getting a blue one. Completely color swapped. I just love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like I was wrong there too. Not a pauldron. I'm thinking too much Star Wars. It's actually an epaulet. Learn something new every day. And shifting it back to the pirate's end of the power, we got the 6258 Smuggler Shanty. 70 pieces, three figures, retail for $9.25, which would put you around 13 cent price per piece. Around $30 used, $120 new. Also, an alternate name is the Pirate's Palm Hideout. I love this set. It was actually one of my first vintage pirate sets I obtained. This, along with Lagoon Lockup, we saw in the previous episode. I, I got them both together. I actually got this 1.5 bucks used, which is crazy nowadays because don't, you're going for a minimum around 30. Mm -hmm. But it's a beautiful set. You get a, another rowboat, this time in brown, which is interesting. Is it the pirate's rowboat and the red coat is stealing it? Or is the red coat just using a different colored rowboat? We usually see the Imperials use a red rowboat. So it's interesting how they switched it up this time. He does have red oars. He has the red coat flag on the back of it. We see another inclusion of a shark. Another treasure chest with four chrome gold coins. And we got the little 
I like the secondary name because it's pretty much what it is, a palm tree hideout. They're using palm leaves on top, four of them to be precise. So if you had an extra palm tree elements, you can actually make a whole palm tree by using those, which is a good suggestion. The only thing I would have loved if the, the parts were reddish brown, or I guess at this time brown, instead of black. Because that would have suggested that they actually cut down a palm tree, use the wood to build this, and they use the leaves as the roof. But with the building being black, it doesn't quite make sense, but it's still quite a beautiful build. Yeah, well, I guess the pirates are not as resourceful as we think. And yeah, they just got a little makeshift hut. I think that's the best way to say it. Figures look fantastic. It looks like one of the pirates we get is the same one we got in all the other ones. I, I'm drawing blanks on the name, but it's the one we got in those little poly bags earlier in this year. He's got like his friend with his blue bandana headband thing. Then we get like a red coat officer, I believe. Very sta standard, simple set. Yeah, I mean, you says first rate, first mate Rummy or quartermaster Riggins, depending on which interpretation you like to go by. I don't know the name of the pirate, the blue bandana, but funny enough, he is actually the same one we see in Bounty Boat, the set we saw previously. And we do see the red coat officer or captain again, which is a great inclusion. Mm -hmm. And building on the pirates' power that they're showing off this year, they got 6261 Raft Raiders, 81 pieces, three figures, retail to around $13.25, put you around 60 cent price per piece, $40 used, whopping $195 new. And for this set, it's a little different. It, it, I mean, I guess what we've seen in the previous years is like those like makeshift rafts. Same thing here. We got like the iconic brown logs on the sides. It looks like this time they're using actual barrel pieces. Um, Little change in color scheme. There's like a lot of black in the middle. Little angles here and there. On the top layer, there's like some white plating. Get a huge, looks like a cloth the Jolly Roger as the flag. Bunch of pirates got their treasure chest and a shark. I love this set. And I think a lot of pirate fans can agree with me on this, that this might be one of the most iconic pirate sets to date. It sounds funny because it's a small one, but the name just sticks in your head. Raft Raiders. Like, it's just such a good name for like a pirate it's a very low budget pirate he doesn't have a ship to, to his name or anything like that he simply just has a raft and i did want to get into those figures because you can see it's our first time seeing um captain iron hook it's the newest pirate we're introduced to we'll see him more when it comes to the islander theme later on however this is not captain redbeard it has the same face print same hat same hook for that matter but he actually uses a different torso print so as a kid, you probably would think it's just Redbeard in like an island outfit, if you will. But technically, it is Captain Ironhook, which is one of Redbeard's rivals. I also love the story that could play out here. Like, why are they on a raft? My first thought is that they kind of left Captain Redbeard. They, they were once a crew of Redbeard, and they left him, and this is all they got to their name at the moment. It's Jeff Ironhook with his two crew members. And you can see the crew members are completely different. We did get one similar. They're not using new prints or anything like that. But we have a pirate with a peg leg, which you don't ever see that that common. It's pretty rare. That's not Red Beard or Iron Hook. And we see it just a typical pirate. I also forgot to mention that Iron Hook here does not have a peg leg. We see in later versions he has a peg leg. So he must have lost his leg at some time at sea. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I forgot to mention the alternate name is Iron Hook's Escape Craft. So I guess that's suggested of what this is. And Iron Hook looks like to be the new enemy of the Redcoats or the primary antagonist here. It's nice to get more pirates. And I think Lego started realizing that with Iron Hook. Because you know, at the time, there was multiple pirates. There wasn't just one pirate. Yeah, we had the famous ones like Blackbeard and Captain Kidd. But. You had a ton of them all around, and some of them didn't have big ships to their name. They had tiny little vessels like rafts or dinghies, if you will, and it's just great that LEGO is recognizing. Yeah, and the one thing that really stands out to me with this theme is just the healthy balance of figures you get. Every set, maybe it's not entirely unique figures every time, but it gives you a healthy amount to be able to make your own stories. Like Each one will stand on its own alone. But if you like choose to collect them all or collect more, you can basically expand it, if that makes sense. Like you add variety to your crew. It's not five 
of the same bloom bandana steamboat i don't know like average joe dude it's like each one has their own unique personality and like look to them if that makes sense it was great for kids and it's great for adults with imaginations as well because you can almost name these characters and build a whole story around them just because of that subtle variety that they have i also did forget to mention that this is the first raft we see that actually has a cloth sail um you remember previously um all the rafts had just flag pieces or tattered I guess different flag pieces. They're both flags, just different variety. As this one actually has a cloth sail, which is just a really nice inclusion. Yeah, good luck finding that thing in one piece and not yellowed out nowadays if it's used. It can get quite ugly. I've seen some ugly ones out there. Mm-hmm. And then finally, we're going to see what the British Redcoats have come to offer in terms of firepower and might. 6271 Imperial Flagship. Also known as Admiral's Sea Ship, Ship Sea Lion, well, that's a tongue twister, and the HMS Sea Lion. 317 pieces, four minifigures, retails for $50, uh, around 16 cent price per piece, $228 used, and astounding $1,300 new. I think the thing that stands out to me the most is that this is like the closest I've seen so far that Lego's like nods the real world with like an HMS title directly by calling it HMS Sea Lion. And this is basically what the Redcoats offer in terms of naval firepower. I really love this name, HMSC Lion. And it really does come down to it. A lot of the names that we see in the rest of the world in Europe are actually better than the ones we saw in North America. They make a little bit more sense. I was, just, I was always a little confused by that. But Imperial Flagship, this is technically the first version of it, if you will, because we did see a second version back in 2010. We'll get to that in a later episode. But I do love the idea of HMS Sea Lion because it just emphasizes the fact that these are the British Redcoats. Because the British were the only nation to use HMS in front of the ship name. It stands for Her Majesty's Ship. It's a great inclusion that they're actually recognizing them as the British, just in case there was any confusion. Now looking at this set, though, it's one of the best looking ships Lego's like ever made. And I think that's a very bold but fair statement. I think this outdoes a lot of the bigger pirate ships you see later on. And it might come to surprise, but it's actually my favorite ship ever. If you don't count the secondary Imperial flagship. Mm -hmm. It's just a perfect rendition of a sloop. When you think of a sloop, the minimum sails it has is three. It has three. It has the beautiful tri-sail on the front. has the main sail on the main mast. And then it has a pretty decent sized spanker. (laughs) It's just such a huge improvement to what we see with Caribbean Flipper from the previous 1989 wave, where we just had two sails on the front and a tri-sail and no back sails whatsoever. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm looking at this one, and this one might be my favorite so far. It's just such a clean look. And it looks like the minifigures-wise, it's a nice variety. You get like the Imperial Soldier or the Red Coat Plain Soldier, his like pirate blue bandana-looking friend. Maybe that's like a traitor or something. Uh, you get like an officer, and then it looks like the captain there. I'm um, not sure if he has a name yet. I'm sure you would know him better. And... Yeah, so... Oh, yeah, Do you no, want to finish real quick? Oh, no, no, no. You can keep going, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so you see Admiral Woodhouse. This is his name. And it's funny that they called him Admiral. So, funny if he has the exact same print once again as the Blue Coat Governor that we saw previously just color swapped and he's using the same bicorn hat has a different plume color this time we see white instead of yellow or red that we saw previously however i find it interesting they call him admiral here so it leaves some to be desired we never actually got that red coat governor we only ever got the admiral so we're missing a figure there we sadly never obtained but you can always make this the governor of course if you would like to you do get the pirate quote-unquote figure kind of similar to bounty boat um, is it a pirate? Is it a crew member of the Red Coats? That's up to your imagination, and you can kind of see whatever you want it to see. I love that they have a treasure chest. It suggests that this set connects to Bounty Boat, and that this is the treasure chest they found. Those two sets do go great together because you might have extra crew, you might have extra soldiers, you get the officer or captain again, and you do get a rowboat, which this set does lack. Mm-hmm. And once again, it's like pretty standard with prior chests up until this point bottom piece like the hole really one big specialized piece it's like a massive hole piece and 
brown and then you just basically built on top of it it's got a very sleek color scheme got like lots of black with hints of white little blue flags checkered here and there to represent like the the covers for the cannons which in this case has like two cannons on each side pretty well built looks like the deck is well fleshed out lots of stuff to work with there up with the steering wheel i can't be sure i think you would know better is that the a uh, unique compass piece, like an actual working compass piece there, sitting in front of the steering wheel? That is correct. It is the first time we're seeing one of those working compasses, and they do really work. It's it's so cool. I never, it's one of those kind of weird things to find cool, but it's just the fact that LEGO made a tiny piece of the compass that actually works is quite fun. And if you really want to get creative, it's actually quite resourceful. You can use it when hiking if you just wanted a tiny compass to put in your pocket. It's just a very nice piece to have. It's quite expensive in the aftermarket. Um, speaking of expensive pieces, I cannot forget to mention those blue lanterns in the back of the ship. This set and one we'll see later, I believe that piece is exclusive. It might have came in one more set, but it's very rare. And that piece alone goes for about $30 in the aftermarket. So trying to piece this ship together is quite challenging because you need two of those. And then, of course, there's sails, which is always expensive. Wow. Yeah, I guess if you want to piece this together, like the hold you obviously can't compromise on. So you definitely got to shell out the money for that. Other parts you might be able to get away with different color. But yeah, definitely an expensive and difficult to find, I think, piece together. One thing I also forgot to mention, this set has just so many new things to it. Not Let alone the compass, the blue lanterns the sails. Another thing we forgot to mention is that this is actually a new version of the hull pieces. It's a narrower hull piece used for smaller ships. We'll see this used in the future as well, but it's not as wide as the ones we saw with the original Black Sea Barracuda or the original Caribbean Clipper. And that was one of the biggest arguments with that blue coat Caribbean Clipper is it's a very wide vessel because it's using this massive galleon hull piece for such a stubby, short ship. This hull piece is not as wide which makes it look smoother and just better in general. I also forget, forgot to mention that the steering wheel actually does work on this vessel. There is a plate that connects to the rudder, and the steering wheel has two clip connections, which will actually move the rudder when you turn the ship. Wow, that's actually really, like, that's really cool. There's just so many, like, play features on this thing. And I think this, like, slightly downsized version, it reflects in the price $50, Especially if we compare it to like the other ships we saw. Um, we talked about how they were really, really expensive for their time. And it looks like like has become more conscious of that and making more affordable, yet like in a way increasing its like features and playability at the same time. It's a beautiful set. Of course you get the giant red coat flag, which we'll see multiple times, but it's always a very expensive piece because those clips are so clean, so fragile. And I don't know. There's just nothing I can hate about this set. It holds up to this day. You can put this right next to the Imperial flagship we see later on in 2010. You can put it right next to the 2020 Barracuda Bay. It will hold up next to the beautiful Eldorado Fortress coming out this year. This set is just one that will forever be timeless. Yeah, and I think just to supplement it, especially with the nice ship, you obviously you need to have like a base of operations, and that's where we get... 6277 Imperial Trading Post. 608 pieces, nine figures. Also known as Port Royal. Port Royal. Um, retailed for $85, which would set it as the most expensive set for this year. 14 cent price per piece. Used around $454. And new, $1,500. You heard it right, $1,500. There's a lot of takeaway with this, so I'm sure James. I'm sure you'd love to talk about this one. I'm very excited to talk about this. I do. I'm very happy to own this set. I bought it two years ago now and used. It was pristine condition. I got it for around 400. It's only going up year by year by year. And one thing I just want to mention is, if you want this set, I hate to break it to you, but you have to buy it sooner than later. This set is not only rare to find in complete good condition, but it's just getting more and more expensive every year. If you want this one, I cannot stress it enough to try to get it sooner than later. You won't regret it. It is just as timeless as the Imperial flagship we saw above. And I think, as that one is my favorite uh, ship LEGO Pirates has ever made, 
I think this one is very much one of my favorite pirate sets in general. It is up there with one of my favorite Lego sets in general. And from the year 1992, that really says something because when you look at the second pair to like the Lion Knight's Castle we got last year, it does not hold up, but it does in a weird way. And it's just fantastic. So the size of this thing is you get that 32 by 32 raised base plate, which is actually the exact same print from El Dorado. So if you want to try to brick build this, if you have El Dorado, you can at least have that to start. However, I do not recommend tearing apart El Dorado. That says way too beautiful as well. <laughs> and then you also get another 32 by 32 base plate just in plain blue, which makes this set a whopping 64 by 32 studs in length and width. This thing is insanely huge. It takes up a whole bookcase, if you will, a whole shelf, all on its own, and it looks great while doing it. You get that little shack building on the very far left side that does have a basic winch we've seen before. It's just a string attached to a modified one by one, and you pull it and you connect it to whatever you need to to get the certain length on the string, which suggests that the boat can come over that way to get cargo. That shack also has a little attic. In the very back, there's two opening roof sides that can, you can store cargo in there. There's the whole backside is open. You can store cargo. Has those beautiful old and wooden doors, which is fantastic. You get a palm tree there. So I always kind of saw that little storage shack, if you will. After all, it is a trading post. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a cannon for defense on that one hand side, a small wall, and you get another cannon on the back. And now you get to that little tower, which you can do kind of whatever you want with that little walkway. First floor, it's hollow on both sides, so it's just kind of a small walkway. And you can see going on onto the the dock that there's a small ladder there to get down. Up top, though, is the Admiral's Chambers, which, once again, we do get Admiral Woodhouse in this set. This is one of two, I believe, he's included in. He's actually one of three. He's in three sets. We'll get to the third one next episode. Um, he's still a very rare figure. And you do get his little office at the top of that tower with the crane. Now, the crane is fantastic because this is the first time we're seeing an actual working winch in a Lego pirate set compared to, like I said earlier, the tiny string tied to a one by one. This we're getting a full on working winch. It's so smooth. Even after all these years, if you have one of these things, you know, they work great. You don't need to worry about them breaking or anything or stressing out or being loose. Like it's still a fantastic piece. You can see it has a treasure chest. It's holding with four chrome gold coins. And you get that a weird kind of space rubber hose. I always thought that piece was a little weird. We saw it as well in Eldorado Fortress back in 1989. It's back here. It's a good piece to use. It's just kind of funny because it definitely looks very futuristic. You get another big red coat flag, which once again is always valuable. The pirate craft in this. I'm not entirely sure what he's planning on doing, but it's always good to have a pirate to go with a merchant ship. And yes, you heard me correctly, a merchant ship. This is the first time and only time, sadly, in the entire Pirates theme, we got the merchant faction, which is crazy to think about because merchants were the reason pirates existed. Pirates didn't always attack the Imperial ships. That was actually pretty dumb of them if they did because they would usually lose. They would always attack merchant ships that were very, very vulnerable and had valuable goods. So it's great that we at least got one. It's very tiny, but... The inclusion is fantastic. The minifigure we see acting as the merchant is wearing kind of like a brown vest, which is actually exclusive to two sets. So he's also a very expensive figure because he's only in this one and the upcoming Skull's Eye Schooner. We see on the sail, we get a similar crown piece, which is the crown print correction on the sail, which is similar to the actual flag. So we know that it belongs to the British. However, we get its own merchant faction if you will you get two anchors crossed with a barrel in the middle once again we never saw that print used again and it's just really cool that suggestion of it this always makes me think of the trading company we see in pirates of the caribbean which actually was a real trading company in real life and that's always kind of makes me think about it the india trading the east india trading company is the name um always makes me think about it because it is technically british but it's a separate it's a company. It's not owned by the government. It's, it's a very interesting topic. I really recommend people to research. And then going on with the set, now we're looking at the 32 by 32. Once again, we get that beautiful raised bridge. I wish that there was a string attached to it to actually raise with a winch. However, it's pretty easy mod if you want to do it yourself. 
You get the dock, which is very nice inclusion. The right hand side, you can easily park a ship at. Um, the front would be kind of hard, of course, because you have the cannon in the way, but it's great to get the cannon. You get another treasure chest with four chrome gold coins, and you get that small little building. I always thought of this as like the harbor master's house, if you will. Maybe he's the one that checks in ships, like tracks like what goods they're bringing in, what goods they're selling to the merchant to trade or whatever. I always thought that was his shack. The only negative I can say about this set is just the lack of Imperial soldiers. You only get two if you don't count the captain or officer figure and, of course, Admiral Woodhouse. But you only get two basic soldiers, which always just felt a little lackluster. Yeah, especially for a set of this size, maybe one or two more would have been nice. But I guess if you're able to get this at the this price point, you could probably afford the supplement battle packs and army up. And what I'm wondering yeah, too definitely. is, yeah, and what I'm wondering is like those pirate looking dudes on the sides are they related to the pirate faction? Or are these just like random people here that are just happening to work in the trades? I always think of them as just people working in the trades. It, you can think of them as pirates, however, they don't have eye patches. They don't have peg legs. They're just very much colored outfits, if you will, that I feel like just are typical people that work in the trades or like work with under the dock master or the harbor master, just basic crew workers. And the same goes for the person with the flintlock kind of in that small little alleyway of that first tower we took a look at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think what makes this, I th I was telling James earlier uh, when I saw this set, I think this is easily my favorite so far. I know I said Eldorado was, but I think this one took over. And I think just because it's, just, while it is really large, it's a good way because it's so versatile in how you use it that any other set you have beforehand can be used associated with this, like maybe a faraway island that has resources associated to this port materials or maybe a pirate ship or uh imperial ship coming into dock and resupply or drop off stuff like this thing just fits in so well and it's like kind of like the big bad base of operations for everyone to use it's just absolutely fantastic and i will recommend you to add your own accessories to the set if you do own it you know add your own modern goods like like there was so many pieces available to us now we have the new box elements we have this Freight elements, which did exist in this time period, just not included in this. We have barrels and all these like fruits, vegetables, artifacts, if you will. Like you can add the Atlantis port keys and they work fantastic. You can almost add anything to the set and it will look so good just because it's trading goods. It's trading valuables, riches, like whatever you want. Everything just works with it. It's one of those sets you can just modernize so much where it's just, it holds up so well. Another recommendation mod I do have for this is the Creator 3-in-1 Pirate Ship we'll take a look at in a future episode. is a fantastic addition to this set. Um, if you just unbuild, if you will, the Pirate Skull, because those sails are brick built. So if you just unbuild the Pirate Skull and one of the sails, you can easily use that ship as a merchant and have a bigger merchant vessel that actually fits perfectly on that right-hand side dock. It parks perfectly next to it, and it looks great. Yeah, and that pretty much would wrap up everything from this year. The British have come marching in and have shown off their might, but the pirates aren't going to go out quietly either. As we'll check next episode in 1993, the pirates strike back with all of the sets in that theme in that line almost being exclusively pirate related. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Once again, thank you, James. Really appreciate your insight. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and hope you guys enjoyed once again. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Blocks and Talks. And yeah, take care. See you guys next time.